1906. Approximately how many observations lie between 19 and 31? Thanks. So we have n equals 70. Go ahead and label these. Mean x bar equals 25. Standard deviation s equals 6. So we want to keep using these abbreviations so that they stick. Approximately how many observations lie between 19 and 31? This is from the notes 3.3 or 3.4 last week um, from Wednesday that you're supposed to finish on Thursday, or from Tuesday you're supposed to finish on Wednesday's flex day, where we put the mean in the middle, 25, and then we start counting above and below the mean a standard deviation. So up 6 would be 31, down 6 would be 19. So this is the median, and this is plus s and minus s, and those were the numbers we were looking for. And then we have to apply, imply, apply the empirical rule, which says what percent of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean, Jill? That's right. So we know from the empirical rule that 68% of the data lies within that range of 19 to 31. And then one step further, we need the number of observations. Anybody know what to do next? Alyssa? Good. We take the n value of 70 and multiply that by the percent, change it to a decimal of 0.68. And what did you get? Yes, because it's a number of observations, so we need a whole number. Good. So 48 is the number of observations that lie within that range. It's really a three-step process. First step, I would say draw the number line. It helps. Um, and then label the mean and start counting standard deviations above and below until you reach the target numbers. Step two would be be to apply the empirical rule, what percentage of the data lies within that range. And step three would be to multiply that percent times the number of observations. And if this was, does anybody, can anybody tell me, was this the 3.3 notes or the 3.4 notes? Does anybody have those handy they can check? 3.3, okay. So for further study, uh, check your 3.3 notes, and again, if you're not, if this process is not familiar, it might be because you didn't watch those additional sets of notes that were assigned last Wednesday. So I would take the time over the next few days to watch those and uh, make sense of that. Question two is from question 15 on the quiz, and it's one of those long ones. It only has two questions though, so um, can you read that one for us, please, Sally? From question 15 on the quiz, an article by a researcher reported on a long-term study for the effects of hurricanes on tropical streams and forests. The study shows one particular hurricane had a significant impact on stream water chemistry. And the following table shows a sample of a 10 lumina um, ellipses in the first year after the hurricane. Data are in kilograms per hectare per year complete parts through A through E below. Thanks. So part A is asking for quartiles. So what's the first step in finding quartiles? Maddie? Put the numbers in order. That's right. What was the order you put them in? 68, 81, 99, 103, Thanks. I know there's 10 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Got it. Thank you. What's the next step, Jacob? Uh, you have to find the median. Okay. Uh, you take the sample size and add 1, and you find 15. So you get 5.5. So if you count 5 in, and then in between those, so then you add those two together and divide by 2. Well said. Thank you. And what did you get when you added 110? Uh, 117, and that's your Q2. So we have 117 would be the median, which is also known as Q2. Thank you. And then how do we find Q1? Melina? Um, well, I so I have a question about the 
simply look left to right and find 91 here, which is 91. Great. That works too, 91. And then Q3. How did you find Q3, Alyssa Meyer? It is right there in the middle. So it's the median of the upper half of the data set. 168. Done. Now I need to interpret what just happened. I always like a visual, so I'm going to draw a sketch of the box and whisker plot. So quartile 1, quartile 2, quartile 3, max and min, as long as max and min are not outliers, right? What percentage of the data, Orion, is between the minimum and quartile 1? Yes. Uh, nice. Will, what percentage of the data is between quartile 1 and quartile 2? 25%. Max, what about between quartile 2 and quartile 3? 25%. And what about between quartile 3 and the max, Samantha? Yeah, great. So they're called quartiles. So each one between any two numbers is 25% of the data. Based on that information, the interpretation becomes fairly clear. What would the interpretation be, India? Uh, yes. <laughs> you want to read that one for me? The quartile suggested that 25% of the samples contain less than 91 units, 25% contain between 91 and 117 units, 25% contain between 117 and 168 units, and 25% greater than one. Thanks. Excellent. Part B, determine the inter and interpret the interquartile range. So how do we find the interquartile range, Patrick? That's right. And what do you get when you subtract those two numbers? Excellent. And Mars, what would you say is a good interpretation for the interquartile range being 77? B, 50% of the samples span roughly 77 units. That's correct. Nicely done. Part C, find and interpret the five number summary. Jiraiya. Well done. Just like in the box plot, right? The minimum, the maximum, and then Q1, Q2, Q3. Make sure you're getting this down on your opener. There's a chance I'll be letting you use your openers and notes on your test on Monday. Did I already say that? There is. Interpret the five number summary. Choose the correct answer below. This one I think was the hardest one. Uh, Jacob, what did you say for this one? which is 10, yeah. So it's just these, looking at the differences between those values, we notice this one's the biggest, and then the next variation's 23 and 10. Well done. D is the correct answer. And then part D, identify potential outliers. Were you raising your hand? Okay, go ahead. Um, the way to find outliers is to use the IQR. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, but also just looking at 
the data is well known that I do well, which is 77. <laughs> 1.5 times 77 is going to be a negative. If we subtract it from Q1, it's going to be far outside the range if we add it. So that's good. If you have some good number sense, you can kind of just estimate in your head like that. But let's just to verify and practice with this formula. Q1 is 91. And we're going to subtract 1.5 times 77. And when we do that, we get... Anybody? Mars? Did you get? So you can calculate it. Calculators are back there if you want to borrow one. Well? Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Or we're doing the low on the lower end on this one. Negative 24.5. And then when we do the quartile 3, 168 plus 1.5 times 77. What do we get on that side? Okay, 283.5. Our maximum and min were 68 and 178. We are not even close to these extreme values. So, no outliers is the correct answer. Well done. And the last part is looking at these really closely and deciding which one represents the box plot. Mars? You're right. Good job. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what. Th I think B was was clearly like that looks like a hundred is the median, so I kind of eliminated B first, and then yeah, if you look at these minimum values, this looks really close to fifty, but it should be sixty-eight. So sixty, yeah. That's how I good. All the things, and I zoom in. And you just have to, you have to estimate because there's no unit marks on there. Um, any additional questions from the quiz? Okay, if you if you want to pull that up and ask questions at the end, you're welcome to do that as well. Nice job. Three one to three four. Quiz opener.